Dr. Steve Howell is here. He is at the NASA hey. Ames Research Center. He was the guy who thought up, along with Bill Barucki, the, the, the Kepler project, pitched it to NASA. Pitched it three times. They didn't buy it at first? Yeah, you know, it's a, they have a limited go, budget, right? They have a limited budget and you have to sell a good idea. And they, it was doing something that was going to never be done before and that's right. always hard. Uh, you gotta I, convince them. I've talked to the NASA director and they, and you know, I know that they would love to approve every project. They, if they had the budget, they would. Yeah. But you have to pick and choose. You can't do everything. That's right. So yeah. you got Kepler yeah. through. What is Kepler? Well, Kepler, here's a little model of it, and I brought this along. This is just the base. You can hide that or something. 3D printed. So there's a 3D no base. printed model. You can it's bring floating this along. in space, folks. Uh, soon you all can get access to these files, and you can print your own really? 3D model. Oh, yeah. how fun. How cool is that? Yeah, it even comes apart. I won't take it apart right now. But So, Kepler, I need the base back now. <laughs> or you got to play with the spacecraft. <laughs> it, it, doesn't it doesn't stand on its stand own. Up. Yeah, well, so it's, it's in space for real. Is this a telescope? Yeah. It looks like it might be a telescope. It is a telescope that sits on top of a spacecraft. Here, we'll actually take it apart. So this is the spacecraft part. It's very okay. small, and this is the telescope part. So there's thrusters in here to keep thrusters, it in position. Thrusters, computers, uh, avionics, the way we communicate with it, all the antennas, all that's down in here. Is it an optical telescope? It's an optical telescope. It's this is just the telescope. It has one instrument. It's a giant imaging camera that's uh, kind of like the camera in your cell phone, but costs a lot more money. <laughs> it's a lot more precise. And what is it? Look, what frequencies? What wavelength is it looking? It looks at? in uh, roughly the same wavelength your eyes see. So it's like a so like it's, Hubble. Then. It's like Hubble. How is, yeah. how is it different than Hubble? Well, it's different from Hubble in that it sees a very large portion of the sky at once. Hubble's got like a narrow. Hubble field of sees view. a very small portion. The, the analogy is if you hold a pin in your hand at arm's length, Hubble sees about the size of the tip of the pin when it looks well, that's in the sky. Anything. That's right. Yeah. And Kepler sees about the size of your full hand at arm's length. So and it's is, very it, large is it is it moving sky. around all the time, looking at different regions of the sky? Um, well, it is now. So it's orbiting the sun. It's not orbiting the Earth. Hubble orbits the Earth. Kepler does not orbit the Earth. Now, it's the reason Hubble <coughs> orbits the Earth is to get it out of the atmosphere. Why did you get out of the put atmosphere, Kepler yeah. over by the sun? Isn't that bright? Well, it's not by the sun. It's orbiting the sun much like the Earth is orbiting oh, the sun. Okay. It's in a similar orbit to the Earth. Okay. But and why, why it orbited the sun? If you orbit the Earth, the Earth is a problem. The Earth gets in your way some of the time. You, you can't look see at, through you it. You can't yeah. see through it. The Earth has an atmosphere, which you're in, even though you're high right. above it, you're still in sun. The Earth has magnetic fields, has the Van Allen belts you've heard of. Those are radiation events that you pass through. So orbiting the Earth is not the greatest place for a telescope. Uh, orbiting the sun is wonderful. You're away from the Earth. You're away from all the disturbing forces. Right. And while it's in that space, uh, in the orbit, it's not blocked by the sun. It can see almost everything except That's right. that small area, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So what is Kepler looking for? Uh, Kepler's looking for planets that orbit other stars. That was the primary mission. Uh, that was what the big selling point was. And in particular, not just any planets, but planets that are the size of the Earth that orbit stars like our sun. These are going to be things that we wanted to find that are similar to our Earth. When did, when did Kepler launch? Launched in 2009. So it's seven years ago. How long right. did it take to get in position? Uh, not very long, a few months. Okay. So it's been out there for almost seven years That's looking right. yeah. at space. And have you yeah. found Earth-like planets? Why? Funny you should ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you why I ask. I remember talking maybe 20 years ago. Yeah to uh, <clears throat> space scientists who said someday we might find planets, yeah. let alone Earth-like planets. We only 20 years ago didn't even know yeah. if there were planets Man, other that than our solar It's system. a very young field in astronomy. Yeah. yeah. So this is very early on. You said, let's go look at planets. And why yeah. Earth-like planets? Well, we, you know, humans forever have wanted to know if we're alone in the universe. Are there other things like us, other life at all? And we right. believe in our solar system. There probably isn't any. I think that's not 100%. Maybe signs included. of old life. But maybe old life or maybe small things, but yeah. probably nothing like a human. I think uh, we would know by now. You would think so, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, so all those movies we've seen, they're probably not really true. Um, <laughs> no Martians. Yeah, so we want, you know, you, it, it's just a fundamental question. And you also want to know if our solar system is common or our solar system is just a one-off. And, and I guess the thinking <clears throat> is, well, if Earth had the right temperature, the right mix of chemistries, the right distance from the sun, yep. the right periodicity, the right gravity to create us, that an Earth-like planet would be more likely to have life? Is that yeah, right? That's the idea. We believe that liquid water on the surface, so you have to have a surface. Yep. Jupiter, for example, has no surface. It's a so, gas giant. Yeah, you Nothing can't have there. liquid water on its surface. Yeah. So we believe you have to be rocky, you have to have a surface, you have to have the right temperature, probably an atmosphere. What's the range of temperatures? 
Uh, in our solar system, or the range that's used, it's called the habitable zone. Mm -hmm. It's a range that's uh, the range where you believe liquid water would exist on the surface. So it's somewhere between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. That seems it's like a, a reasonable simple definition. Right? Yeah, it's a reasonable yeah. definition. Yeah. Um, we, we wouldn't be able to see life if we're looking at we these would, planets. No. You don't see it that clearly. No, what we detect, we don't even see the planet at all. What we detect is a small drop in light when the planet passes in front of the star it's orbiting. So some planets have orbits that orbit around their star and never cross the line of sight between our telescope and their star. So it's only those very few percent, about 1% of all the planets that line up exactly at the right angle. So when our telescope looks at that star, we see the planet pass in front of the star. The light from the star drops a very small amount, but we can measure that drop. And what can you tell from something so simple? What we can tell from that is we can tell, um, depending on how large the drop is, we can tell how big the planet is. Okay. Depending how long the drop lasts, and when we see it again and again and again, we can tell the orbital period of the planet. Okay. Then using Kepler's laws, as we <laughs> talked about earlier, you can do some calculations and find out the orbital period of the planet and how far from its star it orbits. And that allows you to make an estimate of its possible temperature. Interesting. Yeah. So you're looking <clears throat> for something in the Goldilocks zone. Those are, of course, the called. high, the high prime things we're looking yeah, at. Yeah. And so Kepler itself, uh, for four years, stared at one part of the sky. It found about 5,000 planet candidates. You're kidding! I'm not kidding. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> in one small part of the sky. And of those, many were the size of the Earth. Wow. Now, yeah, I'm old enough to remember the, the headline, <laughs> we found planets. That's and right. then I'm old enough to remember the headline, we found a Earth-like planet. Yeah. We have how many now? 5,000 planets. Now, not all Earth-like. But if you take that number and you take the number of planets the size of the Earth and say how many there would be in our entire galaxy, yeah. it's about 20 million planets. In our galaxy alone. In our galaxy alone. 20 million. That would be similar, could be similar to our Earth sufficiently similar to be a host for life perhaps well if you've got yeah. 20 million that means that's you've got pretty a pretty good, good shot that's at it, right. right that's pretty good odds i mean i'm sure nobody <laughs> in your position is ever going to say well this definitely means anything but it does sound like yeah. that's pretty good evidence that light that at least the planet that we were born on is not unusual that's right yeah, it's not unusual. And, is that and what you're trying to find for out? For me, I would believe that there's clearly going to be other life in the universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that the real goal uh, the, of Kepler? What other, what it's other things It's certainly one can of the goals. The, the other goal is to prepare for the next things that NASA wants to do. They always are doing that, Right. They? So the yeah. next thing, the next big telescope is going to be the James Webb Telescope that will be launched in a year or two. It's going to observe many things, but one of the things it will observe are planets that were discovered by Kepler and by the new version of Kepler K2. These are going to be planets that orbit a star roughly in the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone, planets that could have life, and it's going to be able to try to measure their atmospheres, measure the compositions of their atmospheres. So if you would find things like oxygen or chlorophyll or signs of pollution, that would be a good sign. Wouldn't that be interesting? That there would be life there. If you saw burned hydrocarbons in the yeah. atmosphere, that'd be a sign yeah. something's going on. That would be, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how long uh, does Kepler have... Uh, you said it's not, yeah. I, I asked is if it yeah. was nuclear powered or solar right. powered, how, yeah. how long is it going to continue? So it's, it has, these are solar panels on the back. These, okay. these are actually very important to the mission we're running now, K2, because we use them as a symmetry um, to balance the two remaining reaction wheels pressing against the pressure of the light of the sun. So the sunlight presses on these, and yeah. the two remaining good reaction wheels press against that, and that's how we operate the telescope now. You're kidding. And point it. No. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Those must be that. very small forces. They are very small. The pressure of sunlight is the equivalent of two mosquitoes landing on a pool table. <laughs> <laughs> and yet enough. And yet enough. To operate you're, the you're telescope. in space. That's right. the only force you have. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of amazing. So it can run for about two more years, and then it that's will run all. out of fuel. So it gets its power What's the fuel? from the fuel is is a gas called hydrazine, mm -hmm. and it's uh, used to maneuver the spacecraft and keep it pointed. It's used to keep it pointed directly at a certain. Field. So you can't keep it oriented after a couple of years because you'll be out of right, fuel. Right, we'll be out of you're fuel. Out of so the telescope yeah. will just be out there and it'll still forever. operate. There's still solar uh, batteries <coughs> are still going, but That's you just right. can't point it. We can't point it, and then it'll start to tumble, and eventually right. these might not be pointed at the sun anymore, and it's all bad. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. It's all bad. How many years yeah. did you have, or will you have well, had total? Well, if it lasts for two more, the whole mission would have been eight years. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot of observations. It was only supposed to be three and a half, so, you know. Nice we did, job. Yeah, we did better. And how much of the sky have you surveyed? 
Um, it'll be uh, about one um, two hundredth of the entire sky, <laughs> wow. so not much. Not but much. still, you found a lot of planets yep. out there. And, you know, it just means they're everywhere. Everywhere right. you look, every star you see probably has a planet. Do you remember the first planet you saw? Was that a big day? The first planet I saw, I think, was Venus. No, no, I mean, uh, I mean <laughs> Kepler, not you, but I mean that thank you, you used. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. They're very funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember Venus. Yeah, yeah. She was a great yeah, planet. Yeah. Uh, but no arms. I just no arms. I know. What yeah. can you? So um, <laughs> the other night I saw Jupiter was like very bright, wasn't it? Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah, I thought yeah. I thought that was uh, Venus. Yes, another the moon. planet. Might have been my second planet. Could have been. Yeah. Probably was. Yeah. But I mean, what's the first planet Kepler saw? I guess. Uh, well, Kepler didn't. It doesn't just point at one star at a time. It points right. at about a hundred. So you saw a lot of them. At so we once. saw lots of planets. That must have been a good day. Though. That was a good day. <laughs> it was a very good day. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. It worked. Yeah, it did. That's neat. Cool. Steve, it's a real pleasure meeting you, and congratulations. This Thanks was your baby for 14 years. You've been working on this. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. Um, What's the next project for you? Do you know? Uh, for me, the next project is going to be probably moving on to uh, missions after this, looking for atmospheric stuff with JWST. Things Fun. like that. Trying to find signs of life. Fun. So maybe next time we'll talk, instead of just finding planets that are the size of the Earth, we'll be talking about finding atmospheres that are like ours. You did find a new hot Jupiter. Yeah, here. many of them. Yeah. yeah. Gas giant. I hate those. Yeah. 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 No life on them. Yeah. Although, <laughs> we're kinda, it's kind of uh, anthropocentric of us to assume that it has to be like our... Well, how Absolutely. do you make, how do you, I mean, couldn't life exist any, any, pretty much anywhere, Well, right? sure, I mean, we, even we on our Earth, know. we find life in very strange places. Uh, the Marianas Trench and, yeah. yeah. Hot, hot springs that are too hot for us right. to live in and, yeah, so many we, other places. We so. can't be too uh, anthropomorphic. We have to we assume cannot. that there, there may be other life. But on the other hand, yeah. something that is, looks like what we are used to is, I mean, we at least know life can exist there. That's right, we do. We think we're alive anyway. <laughs> we do. So nice. Thank you. I really appreciate your time, Dr. Howell. Thank cool. you so Thanks for having much. Me. Steve Howell uh, is from the NASA Ames Research Center, just down the road a piece, and the Kepler Project. Yeah, so check us out. Send me some emails. Is there a website? What's the website? Uh, you can look up nasa.kepler.gov. NASA take you everywhere you want to go. Fantastic. <clears throat> yep.